If you thought that effect was electrifying, here's something that really is. The overhead wires that are gradually bringing electrification to the whole of our railway system, except the southern region, which will retain the familiar third rail. Power is the key word in a modern railway network, and there are 25,000 volts in those wires. However, while some of us know something about electrification, few of us know anything at all about freight services, a less romantic, perhaps, but vitally important aspect of modernization. The plan provides for the concentration of marshalling into fewer highly mechanized centers. In fact, we already have places like Temple Mills here, most modern marshalling yard in Europe, with novel features like what appear to be robot trucks operating themselves. The method is worked by the automatic operation of primary retarders, which ensure that wagons descend from the hump at the optimum speed for safe shunting. Weight and approach speed are first measured by mechanical and electronic equipment, which passes on the information to the retarder mechanism by the time the wagon reaches it. Secondary retarders are operated from the control tower. With the new marshalling yards handling many times the amount of freight they have in the past, new goods sheds with every labour-saving contraption, like this one at Peterborough, are being built. The familiar wooden signal boxes are disappearing too, being replaced by centralised ultra-modern boxes like this, which are so complex that the Signals and Telecommunications Department of today is probably the most highly specialised in the whole of the railway system. Mind you, to the layman, surely nothing could be more confusing or complex than a place like this. Not a signal box, but the electrical control room at Canterbury, which covers over 90 route miles and operates switches at current feeder points by remote control throughout an area extending from Gillingham to Ramsgate and Dover. It's scarcely an unskilled job being a railway man these days. Needless to say, one of the greatest problems is to build new stations and keep the present ones operating. A solution to this engineer's nightmare would be to shut down stations like Euston for a couple of years, but that's not exactly practical. Some of the new designs are extremely attractive. This, for example, is Oxford Road, Manchester. Before projects like these can be started, scale models have to be made of each proposed new station and considered by an endless number of bodies such as ministries, municipal councils, police, chambers of commerce and remote concerns we've probably never even heard of. This, by the way, is a glimpse of Leeds City Station as it will eventually look. We grumble sometimes at higher fares, and why not? But it's good to know that by these means, our railways will not only make up lost ground, but be able to continue their old tradition of pioneering and set new standards for the world to follow. <laughs>